This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 11th day of August in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. A shady Brazilian businessman who faced multiple fraud and other charges in Guyana almost a decade ago was shot dead execution style last evening on Regent Street, just outside the Kerpolani store. The 51-year-old man, identified as Euclid da Silva, was in a Toyota pickup with another man when a car drove up behind him and two gunmen exited, opening fire on the two sides of the pickup. The execution was caught on surveillance cameras in the area. The two gunmen were seen hurrying back to a white Toyota car and speeding away from the scene. The Silva was pronounced dead at the scene while the other man in his vehicle was seriously injured. Based on the video recording of the incident, the Silva appeared to have been waiting on someone. Investigators are not clear as to a motive behind the execution. Police investigators arrived on the scene and spent more than two hours doing their on-site probe. The dead man, Euclid da Silva, operated a business in the Hatfield Street area. Back in 2010, he was charged for allegedly forging a Guyana birth certificate to show that he was born here in Guyana. He was handed over to the Brazilian authorities. But two years later, the man reappeared in Guyana and was arrested and charged again in relation to fraud. The Brazilian authorities reported at the time that he had escaped from a Boa Vista prison. They had described him as a known drug trafficker and wanted man. In 2014, he was freed of the fraud and conspiracy charges in Guyana after the prosecution failed to produce sufficient evidence during his trial. De Silva has remained in Guyana since then and continued to operate a business in the city. His name was also linked to several cases of human trafficking. Investigations are continuing this evening into his murder. More news coming up in just a moment. What's our purpose? Together we rise. For our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises. Strengthen our community. Reliably connect our customers. Innovate for all in our country. Together, we rise. A message from Republic Bank. We've got exciting news. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster. Turn 
up the flavor. I'm in a rush. Digicel got me in a rush. Driving style for the summer. Ah, Digicel summer rush. Nobody's doing it big like Digicel this summer. Top up with $1,000 or more and collect the letters to spell the word R-U-S-H for a chance to win one of three brand new Toyota Rush SUVs. Yes, you heard it right. Three brand new Toyota Rush SUVs. Drive him style for the summer. Hey, did you sell summer rush? Start topping up now. Let GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely, apply online, or call your branch to schedule an appointment gbti we see guyana through your eyes welcome back scores of lindeners started a protest in their town this morning blocking the critical mackenzie wisma bridge in support of the unvaccinated nurses and doctors who have been barred from entering their workplace and against the government vaccination policy after nurses and doctors and other staff members of the Linden Hospital were blocked again today from entering the facility because they are unvaccinated against COVID, other citizens of the town came out in support of them and moved the protests from the hospital to the bridge over the Demerara River in the town, halting traffic from both ends. Some of those who gathered said they are in full support of the hospital staff being given a choice about whether or not to take the vaccine and not being forced to take it. The Linden residents said they are not in support of the other measures that have been implemented by the government, which bars unvaccinated persons from visiting any government facility without a previous appointment. As more persons gathered to join the protests, Apostle Nigel London, who operates a church in the community and who has been leading protests against mandatory vaccinations, said citizens of Linden should not be taken for granted and they must not be forced to subject themselves to take a vaccine if they do not want to. He said the nurses and doctors have been in the front line since the pandemic started and now they are being treated differently because they have not taken the vaccine. There's a reaction and we're trying to avoid it. If you see what I saw last night, blessing, blessing, be good brother. Persons were a baby. Had an emergency and no nurse could take care of the child last night. The Minister of Health has to avoid this. It's descending into what you don't want to have happening, Linda. I wouldn't stand there and see my, my fellow Lindeners be, 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 be treated in a manner that's destructive. But look at what's happening to our society. Original Chairman Darren Adams spoke to the protesters and the locked out hospital staff. He said while he understands the importance of protecting oneself against COVID, the rights of citizens must not be trampled on. Adams said the government needs to find a better way to convince persons to get vaccinated. He sees the current action by the government as bullyism. And I support your cause for standing for your right. No one should force you to take a vaccine. Exactly. Right, so COVID is of concern to all of us. And we were able, under the previous administration, to manage COVID in Region 10. Right? And so, while I am concerned about your safety, I am also saying plain that I am with you that vaccines should never be made mandatory. Now, Back at the hospital, the management did not budge on its position that all persons entering the facility should be vaccinated. A number of mothers and their newborns who had clinic appointments for today were turned away because the mothers were unvaccinated. The Region 10 residents intend to continue their protest action and they are calling on the government to rethink its vaccination policy. Region 10 has the lowest vaccination rate in the country, with less than 20% of residents vaccinated against coronavirus. 
Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony today said those nurses attached to the Linden Hospital who are being locked out of the hospital did not produce a PCR test result in order to gain access. The health minister explained that there is a clear guideline which now mandates health workers who are not vaccinated to produce a negative PCR test result. He said nurses who were vaccinated are being allowed to carry on with their duties. You know, look, this thing is a public safety matter as well. So imagine if you're vaccinated or a patient who's unvaccinated come to the hospital and you have staff that are unvaccinated working with you. You know, so it's, it's something, it's ethical, it's moral, and we have to uh, protect ourselves. As we reported, the issue has sparked a protest in the mining town, with residents defending the nurses' choice to not take the vaccine. The health minister said his ministry is monitoring the situation in Linden and that he hopes good sense will prevail. And I really uh, do believe that um, with a little bit more education, um, that the healthcare workers who are reluctant would understand the importance and the need to get vaccinated. So we, we hope that this would happen sooner rather than later, and we continue to monitor to make sure that the services that we are delivering is not compromised. Dr. Anthony made it clear that if health workers continue to refuse to take the vaccine, the health ministry will not be paying for any of those PCR tests. Additionally, he said there has been an uptake in the vaccination numbers, pointing out that on Tuesday, more than 4,000 persons took the first dose of the vaccine. So um, yesterday alone, we had um, we did uh, 4,930 vaccinations. Uh, of those, uh, 4,329 were persons receiving their first dose. The government of Ghana has been trying to find new ways to deal with vaccine hesitancy across the country. In a statement this evening, the Ghana Police Force is calling on those protesters blocking the Wisma Mackenzie Bridge at Linden to desist from doing so. The police force in a statement said that while the constitutional right of citizens to peaceful protest is respected, when such protests denigrate into unlawful actions, the police force, in keeping with its mandate of maintaining public safety and security, will as a consequence take the requisite lawful actions to ensure that law and order are restored. The police force said under the circumstances and in recognition of the protests at Linden, it is calling on the persons involved in the protests who are blocking the bridge to desist from doing so, since it is an unlawful activity as they are blocking vehicular and other access to the bridge. Taking action to expand access to the COVID-19 vaccines, the Pan American Health Organization has announced that it will be using its revolving fund to help countries in Latin America and the Caribbean procure enough vaccines to control transmission. And that was announced today by the PAHO director, Carissa Etienne. She said the region is still short of the doses needed to turn the tide on the pandemic. PAHO's revolving fund will go beyond the 20% COVAX offers, Dr. Etienne explained, referring to COVAX's commitment to procure vaccines for 20% of the region's population, the most at-risk group. COVAX has been running into several problems with supply. The revolving fund, which has procured all the vaccines for the region at low prices for 42 years, is already receiving requests from countries for COVID-19 vaccines for the last three months. Up until now, the revolving fund has served as one of the COVAX purchasing mechanisms and worked directly with countries requesting support to deliver donations through bilateral agreements. It has deployed over 20 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to Latin America and the Caribbean countries procured through COVAX. Let's tell you now that the chairman and members of Ghana's first law reform commission were sworn in today by President Irfan Ali. The chairman of the commission is retired Justice of Appeal B.S. Roy. The other members are Vice President of the Ghana Bar Association, Teddy Houston, former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Clarissa Reel, Educator Dr. Brian O'Toole, and Attorneys Emily Dodson, Ripnarine Satram, and Dinawati Pandey. The Law Reform Commission will be tasked with consulting the legal fraternity and the wider population on recommendations for the revision of various laws. The Commission will also assist in drafting new laws through the Attorney General's Chambers and the Parliamentary Council. Attorney General Anil Nandla said the Commission is long overdue, since there are many laws that are in need of revision. The Law Reform Commission has a 
very, very important role to play in Guyana's developmental trajectory. You would have heard me say repeatedly that we need to overhaul our entire legislative architecture. In order to do so, the Law Reform Commission shall be one of the important institutions that will be driving that process. The Attorney General also insisted that the country's entire constitution is in need of overhaul, pointing to many of the country's laws being outdated. But trust me, there is a lot of law reform to be done in the pipeline. I mean, I could tell you the entire public health sector. We have about 20 pieces of legislation there alone. You have in the agriculture sector a whole series of legislation. The oil and gas sector, we have not even touched that sector yet. In that sector, in that sector um, 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 a tender went out to invite um, uh, tenders, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, invitation to bids was done to invite tenders uh, from international companies to do a work on a project which would be a comprehensive uh, examination of our uh, statutory architecture in terms of the oil and gas sector and to amend and to redraft and to put in new laws where necessary because you know that's a very important area and it's very specialized so they will be doing that but in almost every area of endeavor there is need for law reform. The Law Reform Commission is set to get down to work immediately and will start by reviewing various amendments and ensure that those amendments are added to existing laws. With cross-dressing officially removed as a criminal offense in Guyana, the Society Against Sexual Orientation Discrimination is pleased with the recognition of the ruling that was handed down by the Caribbean Court of Justice three years ago. In a statement, Sasset emphasized that there are still gaps in local laws that legislators need to fill by denouncing some other colonial laws that are seen as attacking minorities. Two days ago, the National Assembly passed amendments to the Summary Jurisdiction Offenses Act, removing cross-dressing as a criminal offense. In welcoming that decision, the head of SASA, Joel Simpson, told news source that more must be done locally to protect the rights of the LGBT community. He said there are still many laws which remain that could be used to discriminate against members of the LGBT community in Guyana. While in that formal judicial sector there's no apparent discrimination, there's still issues on the streets with police and other state actors using other laws which are found in the Summary Jurisdiction Act. Offenses related to loitering, vagrancy and some offenses related to sex work to target transgender people who might be cross-dressing on the streets and other LGBTIQ people. And the targeting is often done for some form of extortion, really to extort financial or sexual favors from, from these groups of persons. So that's still happening and we really feel that what the government needed to do to give full effect to the McEwen decision is to review the entire Summary Jurisdiction Act and remove not just cross-dressing because the court already had struck that down but the other offenses which violate fundamental human rights and freedoms. Simpson added that many of the laws that remain on the books in the country have no place in the 21st century and should be completely struck out. However, he said he remains hopeful and that the other laws will follow the same fate like the one that made cross-dressing an offense. Uh, the CCJ, in its decision, not only said that the law was unconstitutional and violated particular fundamental human rights and freedoms, in particular the right to equality and non-discrimination, freedom of expression, and so forth. It went further than that and struck down the law. So it was cross-dressing was already no longer offense since then. I think though that the bill that was passed yesterday, the amendment that was passed, represents a good public awareness initiative on the part of the government. So if anybody missed it in November 2018, they're certainly aware of it now. And 
the general population certainly pays more attention to what happens in Parliament than they do to what happens in the courts. So I think it raises that awareness that cross-dressing is no longer criminalized. Mr. Simpson says Sasson also intends to engage the Attorney General on a number of other issues. In 2018, the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that a law which made cross-dressing a crime was unconstitutional. The CCJ instructed that the offense be removed from the laws of Guyana. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. What's our purpose? Together we rise. For our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises. Strengthen our community. Reliably connect our customers. Innovate for all. Together, we rise. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, we begin in Jamaica, where a newly formed advocacy group, the COVID Action Group, wants the government to use the broadest range of Jamaican skills and professionals to drive a more effective vaccination communication plan. Convener of the group attorney at law, Katie Knight, said the current plan to use elected representatives at the local level is not likely to succeed if politicians are left to carry the message. The government of Jamaica has been pushing for elected representatives to help drive the vaccination message in an effort to encourage greater community support. But Knight said the community approach should not rely on councillors when many are unpopular, obscure and unknown to their electors. He proposes the popularity of Jamaican athletes and entertainers and neutral persons with a natural following to be tapped to carry the vaccination message. In addition, Knight said radio stations, shopping centres, tax offices and transport centres, among other commercial outlets, should be inundated with messages on the efficacy of the vaccines. In neighboring Brazil, Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro has suffered a defeat in Congress after his plan to change the current electronic voting system in elections to one with a paper trail failed. The proposal fell well short of the three-fifth majority required for a constitutional amendment. Mr. Bolsonaro, who is planning to run for a second term next year, says the current system is open to fraud. The Electoral Tribunal has dismissed the allegation as disinformation. 
Critics of the Brazilian leader dubbed Trump of the tropics during his campaign say he's using the same tactics as the former U.S. president to allege widespread fraud in case he loses the next election. President Bolsonaro has for years campaigned for a change to Brazil's electronic voting system, which has been in place for 25 years and which experts say has a solid track record. And finally tonight, international news. Google employees in the U.S. who opt to work from home permanently may get a pay cut. The technology giant has developed a pay calculator that lets employees see the effects of working remotely or moving offices. Some remote employees, especially those with a long commute, could have their pay cut without changing address. Google has no plans at this time to implement the policy in the U.K., Employees in many businesses have proved that working from home permanently is viable during the COVID-19 pandemic. Many companies are now looking ahead to how employees will work as the pandemic recedes, even as the U.S. continues to battle the Delta variant of the disease. Silicon Valley firms, some of which are keen to get employees back to their desk, are experimenting with employees' pay structures. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.